Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen. With me today is the woman who knows how to set personal boundaries, Alex Standy. This is your daily dose of happy. We are so happy you decided to join us today. And we, we were kind of anticipating that David Strickle was going to be joining us today, but he's got some personal stuff going on that uh, really got in the way uh, lately for him, so he can't make it. But standing in for him is Ty Alita coach Stacey Clinet, who hasn't been on in like, what, year and a half, something like that? It's been a while since we had you on the show. I can't remember what it was, but it was a while ago. I think, it, yeah, it's about that yeah. long. I disappeared for a while, too, going on to the, uh, my husband hiked the Pacific Crest Trail, so I was his. Whoa. Uh, support vehicle wow. <laughs> in, in person. Um, yeah. Phenomenal journey. We had a great six months on the road uh, last April through October. And yeah. Wow. Yeah. Really life changing. Um, taught me so much about myself and I got to revel in the miracle of other people and how mm. kind they are and how diverse we are as a humanity and yeah. see just really neat folks show up in places I did not expect. That's always a, a, nice. a life lifter. When, when you yeah. get that kind of experience, it just lifts you up. Yeah, it really did. Coming back home was really rough. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, what am I going to do with myself now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard to top that one, isn't it? I mean, you, you, you've just been basically doing a complete life-changing experience, and then you come back home, it's like, oh. Laundry. <laughs> Here yeah. I am again. <laughs> you know, we were on the road, so yeah, laundry was necessary, but it was a laundromat in some town that I didn't even know the name of. Right. You know, thank God for Google. Like, how do we ever survive? <laughs> I said that the other day. I'm using my GPS going, how did I make it this far? Like, <laughs> Oh, well, we did it with, with AAA maps and asking the local resident, how do you get from A to B? <laughs> That's how we oh, did it. Those, was, yeah. Trip books. I love those things. Yeah. Trip dicks. Oh, yeah. Yes, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> In my day, it was MapQuest. MapQuest? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Do it at home, fun. though, right? Yeah. You can do it at home. Yeah. Get it down if you don't have a printer and hope for the best. That's right. right. Exactly. Hope <laughs> Yep, I remember doing that too. I remember yep. doing that too. And just like uh, with with the older versions, if if you had written something down wrong or yep. you misinterpreted something, all of a sudden you're in the middle of nowhere and like, okay, yeah, like, that wasn't what I thought was going to be here. Where do I go next? Mm-hmm. And then, then you talk to the local and says, well, you just take the road down there to Route 63 and take a left and go down to the last stop sign and hang a right and you'll be right there. And you get down Route 63 and you realize you don't know which one is the last stop sign. Right? <laughs> <laughs> just keep going. If you pass it, go back. There you That's go. right. <laughs> Well, and in the areas that we were traveling very often, you know, up in Washington and Oregon, there's lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of trees. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tons of trees them. don't have a cell signal. <laughs> this is true. They're not right. like the trees in LA here where they have cell signals, right? So right. it was, okay, I got to rely on people's directions. And like you said, I remember trying to absorb as much as possible, like, okay, can you talk slower? Like willing mm-hmm. them to talk slower so I can mentally record everything that they were saying. I, I feel like my brains don't work like that anymore. It's so weird. Like so I was getting directions to go to a one doctor's office to another, and I I had to download the map to the hospital because it was too much. I was like, <laughs> what? Right? What? Up? Elevator? No, I'm done. <laughs> that is interesting how we've rewired our brains to mm. um I, I don't want to say lazier, but it's almost worth It's so convenient. No, nah, it's true. We can't it's even so remember phone numbers anymore. Yeah. Well, I can't. Exactly. I, I, don't, I can't speak for the rest of the population, but I remember them. I can tell you what my phone number is when, when I was growing up. I mean, I can tell you almost all my phone numbers throughout. My yeah, history. what's my phone number now? Huh? Well, I don't know your phone number. I, re- I remember my phone exactly. number. <laughs> I remember my own phone numbers. I'm talking about do I know yours by heart? Oh, I, I see. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I made a real effort to, you know, memorize. Like, obviously, I know my daughter's phone number, my husband's yeah, yeah. number, but I thought, you know, I should probably know a couple other ones by heart just in case something happens. Right. Always memorize your in case of emergencies. Exactly. But, exactly. But even, I'm thinking back. I, I never knew anybody's number when I was growing up either. No. Nope. Oh, I did. Nothing ever changed there as far as. <laughs> <I was concerned. laughs> 
<laughs> maybe you know a couple of really close friends because I would call them all the time, but that was about mm-hmm. it. Most people I didn't know. I mean, I can still remember my uncle's phone number. Yeah, because he's partly because he still has it. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, they're, they're just aren't that many numbers. I well, one thing I can say though, Stacy, you were talking about how the trees don't really have any way to communicate. I've just been reading a really interesting book that was handed to me by my my sister for Christmas. Uh-huh. Secret Life of tree, of, of Plants, excuse me, Secret Life of Plants. Have you read that one? Yeah, you're shaking your head up and down. Oh, yeah. that's a, So I'm a clinical herbalist on top of doing tie and all okay. kinds of things. <laughs> pretty much required reading. Like you want to know uh, a lot of about the plants and, and the mysteries of how they communicate. And I'm delighted. We've had enough rain here in L.A. that there's mushrooms around. I'm like, oh, my God, look at the mushrooms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it really is remarkable. I mean, now this is a book written in the 1980s, I believe. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's really remarkable what had been discovered in the 20 years leading up to that book's publication, 30 years or so, uh, yeah. regarding how, not just how plants communicate with each other, but how they interact with humans in mm-hmm. ways that most of us even now don't even realize. Yeah. And, and we're actually at a point now where there's a lot more awareness about how interconnected everybody is and everything is. But even with that, I mean, I'm reading the first chapter of the book and my eyes are open like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> my house plants are listening. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they're, they're, they're talking about literally how if, if, for instance, you take care of a plant, the plant will not only respond to what's going on in your life, but it'll do so from 500 miles away. Mm-hmm. What? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you go on vacation, your plants are being housed at, and they know how you're feeling. They know exactly <laughs> how you're feeling. That's crazy. Yeah. And they're, great. Happy. <laughs> they're happy if you're if you're having a good time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That, or, for, or if you're um, having a rough time, they'll, then then they go into trauma if you're having a rough time. Uh-huh. So that it's might be why my plants are dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. That's a good point. It's not your house yeah. fault when your plants die. I'm like, I'm watering them. What's the problem? <laughs> it's me. I'm the drama. <laughs> <laughs> Just reassure them that you're okay. That's all. Yeah. yeah. I'm have to. <laughs> no kidding. That was something I was really um, very aware of. Again, back in those, um, forest treed areas in Oregon and Washington mm. where you're, it's just, it's a green zone because you're in right. so many trees, but to feel that energy of connection between not only those trees, but all the other stuff that's at the forest floor and how you get this opportunity to walk into literally this magnificent garden and mm. to become a part of that. And they don't, you know, it's not like, oh, stop here. What's the password? You know, <laughs> or it's just lets you in mm-hmm. and it just kind of envelops you and you can allow yourself to be absorbed by that and with that as much as possible. And that was so much fun. So much, so much fun. <laughs> I, I, I'm looking forward to the next time that I do go into a, a forested area or a heavily natured area. Cause I mean, where I live, we have nature around us, but no, it's, it's basically suburban slash rural. So, you know, yeah. there's, there's also a lot of human presence, but the area you're talking about, it's out in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. You know, so basically all you have are, is the forest. All you have is the trees. There's nothing else going on around there. There might be a, a deserted highway. That's about it. <laughs> you know? So, um, it's a, it's an entirely different experience. And I, I'm looking forward to the next time I'm in a situation like that because I want to now experience that with the knowledge of what I'm picking up from reading this book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like w- one of the, the things I just read about the, and apparently there, there were people both here in the U S and in the Soviet Union at the time. I think in other places that were experimenting with this stuff. And one of the things that they would do is they would, um, they would stage a, 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 um, a murder of a plant. <laughs> they, they would a murder. Yeah. They, they, they would, uh, or a murder or in some ways traumatize a plant. Traumatize. They, yeah. Yeah. They, they would have one person selected to traumatize the plant. And they would do it in the presence of another plant. It's messed up, man. <laughs> and, and then it's later on, and then later on, they would parade that person with a bunch of other people past the plant, and then detect how the plant was responding. And and the other people, no response, no response, no response. And then the murderer would come by, and the the readings would go off the chart. <laughs> you killed my brother, the hatchet welder. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
The trees must have hated George Washington then. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh. We'll that around, man. Uh, I'm surprised the cherry blossoms came back to DC after that. I mean, really, that was just <laughs> quite a gift on their part. But uh, you know, <laughs> some of my favorite campsites were in those places where I, you know, drove. I had a little. I have a little trailer. It's less than 18 feet long. So pull it with my truck into these spaces where the trees are just everywhere around you, yeah. and I would have the best night's sleep. Mm. Always mm-hmm. felt super safe. Um, never feared what was in the forest. Mm-hmm. You know? It was like I felt very protected and cared for. And so it's just like, oh, okay, good night. Oh, wake up the next morning and it's just glorious to be in that space. So mm-hmm. I walk daily in my neighborhood and I, and I adore every tree and plant that I walk by. Mm. You know, there's, there's, there's cool succulents and desert flowers that bloom and then other people have more manicured gardens. And so mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm just a plant whore. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> so, so um, now you read the book that I'm referring to, the uh, mm-hmm. the Secret Life of Plants. You read that a while ago. So, yeah. it's been a when, while. since since you read that one, has that colored your experience of nature? That's a good question. You know, I had always felt connected to the trees, the plants, um, even when I was a, a young young girl. Uh, I had friends that lived at the very longest end of the street that I lived on. So mm-hmm. if I had to go home after dark and I, and I was very perceptive, I always, uh, I always felt like there was something watching me, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I would, I would walk in the middle of the street and almost run home because I could just feel this energy. Mm-hmm. You know? So I knew that there was more out there than what I could perceive with our uh, typical five senses. Right. And then um, herbalism just kind of fell into my lap when my daughter was younger. And so I started using those techniques and we always loved to garden. Uh, I, I sent her up a really cool little greenhouse when she was like six. That was her present. <laughs> She'd go out there for hours diddling around with the dirt and the rocks and little <laughs> seedlings we had planted for her. So that was very much a part of my life and her life as she was growing up. And it seems like it, it is a, a, it's a beyond lifetime learning experience. Like mm-hmm. I can't even learn enough about the trees and, and the medicinal properties of a, a, a single plant to tell you. Then it just goes on and on and on and on. So, um. What a great gift to a six year old, by the way. Yeah. She loved that. She still talks about it. I'm sure. <laughs> of course, now she's getting her uh, PhD in ranch land sustainability. So ah, okay. <laughs> it all worked out. <laughs> you plant Very the seeds thrilled. early. Mm-hmm. But early. yeah, I think that I had a, a, a larger respect for plant life and vegetation and medicinal herbs and trees after reading that book for sure. Cause sure. then it was unveiled that there's a lot more under the surface that we weren't aware of. Yeah. Yeah, and we are seeing more and more um, books and, and films that are reinforcing that. There's one on mushrooms that's fascinating. Fantastic fungi. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what an amazing film that is. Yeah. I, I, I could watch that on repeat because it's just so amazing, that world. It seems so um, alien. Have you seen mm-hmm. that one, Alex? No. Oh, got to see that one. If, if for no other reason, see it for the cinematography. Yes. Okay. Really well done. Beautiful. The CGI will stun you. Mm-hmm. Yes. CGI yeah, is right. just absolutely beautifully integrated. It does, none of it feels fake. It all feels like, oh, we're just seeing another way of looking at the world. Yeah. We did a fantastic job okay, cool. with that. What's it on? Yeah. Uh, is it Netflix, I think? It used to be on Netflix. I don't know. Something... Maybe it's not anymore. I, you're right. It, it was on Netflix at one point, but I'm not sure if it still is. But yeah, yeah. Heck, Alex, you you subscribed to everything, so you yeah. just try them all. <laughs> <laughs> Google it, it'll come up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, I, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to the next time I'm out in a natural setting because I, I know I'm going to be thinking about it differently. I mean, mm-hmm. I I've always had some kind of a, I guess I'd call it a sixth sense about being out in nature. Mm-hmm. This is definitely going to, at the very least, enhance it. Oh yeah, 
oh, yeah. at the very least. Yeah, because now that I have a much better understanding of the kind of communication that goes on, not just between plants that are near each other, but plants that are like, you know, halfway around the world, mm -hmm. I think to myself, oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Now you know you're never alone. You're never alone. <laughs> well, not only that, the, the 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 evidence that these researchers have uncovered over the years indicate that any time that we as individual humans are kind toward plants or you know warm feeling or loving feeling or whatever toward plants, the plants reward it ten times over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, I mean, that's real security. That that that's as close to what we often call unconditional love, which is actually, you know, uh, uh, two ways of saying the same thing. But it, yeah. as, as we're ever going to get, you know, because instantly you get you you put it out there and you get it back, mm -hmm. no delays. You now it's just a question. Of, what's that? You have to be very attuned to that subtle. Well, that's it. That's the one thing you Never. have to be aware of it now. But yeah. but with the knowledge, I think I am going to be aware of it because I've always had that sense. I mean, you you talked about <laughs> you know running home because you felt like they were in the middle of the street because you figured there was there was something out there. Oh, I recall yeah. one time um, early in my marriage with Louise, we went we went uh, to Barbados, and wow. we were we were in the downtown area near where the ships come in, where the cruise ships come in, of uh, the main town there, uh, Bridgetown, I think it is, and there's a little park that runs along the main street going down to the pier. And we were going to take a walk through the park. And I just stopped before we entered the park. And she said, what is it? I said, I don't know, but it feels <laughs> wrong. It feels like th this does does not feel like the right place for us to go. And so we didn't okay. go there. We, we honored the feeling and didn't go there. And then two minutes later, we met a taxi driver who ended up becoming our tour guide and we saw the rest of the island through his eyes. So that may have been what it was. It may have been universe saying, okay, over here is your really cool thing to have happen. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know. I mean, was it, was I yeah. responding to something going on in the park? I, I don't know. Well, yeah. also you don't want to wander off the reservation because things happen in Barbados. Let me tell you, I'm half oh, Asian. Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. 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 So maybe a little bit both. Stay on the resort. <laughs> yeah. Stay on the resort. I know. <laughs> uh, yeah. I didn't know you were half Bayesian. I am. My father's Bayesian. Yep. I didn't know that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very cool. We don't acknowledge him. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> but even so, I would have thought, I mean, how long have you and I been doing a show together? And, and this, this is the Forever. Come up? Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. My dad's Bayesian. My mom is Jamaican and Native American. Wow. What a combination. I know, right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I love Very that. fun. <laughs> and I was just realizing, Alex, I didn't get a chance to ask you, how were your holidays? Great. They were great. Really? Yeah. 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 I got, I got spoiled so bad. I got a new Chromebook. Very nice. Upgrade. Ooh, there you Ooh, go. Yes. Yeah, she's okay. shiny. She's shiny. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we had my stepkid here. We did, we were going to go to the movies, but it was bitter cold. So we stayed in, we did a fire. It was, it was great. We had a good time. Excellent. Excellent. And then New Year's, I just, what did I do? I worked, I worked Christmas and New Year's, but that's okay. Cause it's time and a half. And then <laughs> I didn't have to do any of the important hours. So yeah. And then, uh, New Year's, we just watched the ball drop and went to bed. There you mm -hmm. go. All right. What about you guys? How was your uh, holidays? Mine was quiet. Mine yeah. was really, really quiet. Mm -hmm. Mine was as quiet as, as it has ever been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had lots of food, lots of family, more food, more family, more food. Oh. More food. <laughs> the two main ingredients. It was lovely. It wasn't, um, it wasn't that stressed out holiday feeling you know when you're yeah like, i feel like this year know? was not as stressful as every other year has been yeah it was more relaxed and then uh i thought it was really interesting watching the ball drop uh in times square which one did you watch uh i think i watched the cbs one the one that was supposed to have ryan seacrest on it uh-huh uh-huh he, he wasn't on it or if he was, it must have been much earlier because we didn't tune in until about 15 minutes till the uh, yeah yeah same. But it was so subdued. 
Yeah. And when the ball dropped and every you expect more hoopla. It was like, and, yeah. Uh, and then the the streets were clean. Everything was done. <laughs> and we're like, all right, it's New Year's. All right. Yeah. And he's all cleaned up. Like, crazy. We all suffered so much PTSD through the yeah. last couple of years that everybody's like, oh, here comes another year. <laughs> Oh, oh, it's over. <laughs> Here's another year. I wonder what's going to happen this year. <laughs> yeah. Somebody on Facebook was like, listen, 2023, just come in quietly. Don't touch anything. <laughs> Leave it the way it is. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch anything. Don't look at anyone. <laughs> Single Do file. Do you get the sense there's been a little trauma going on around here or something? Well, that, I don't know, because I had a great 2022. I don't know what everyone's complaining about. Like, I did, too. I did, too. I think the whole COVID thing still is, you know, it's rambling around. Still? It's, 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 still, it's, still knocking oh, yeah. people down, and there's still some fear-mongering around the whole bit, yeah. COVID mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. I, yeah, I think that really did a number on pretty much every person who had to sit through quarantine. Mm-hmm. I mean, the whole world was locked down. Mm. So, yeah, yeah not yeah. knowing. And, and, and of course, in any spiritual practice, the, the finding comfort with the not knowing is mm. huge. Stepping into that void, stepping into the, oh, my God, I've never done this before. Can I do mm-hmm. that? Where can I find the faith, the trust, the guidance to actually get through something that I have no flipping clue what's going to happen next? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was me three months ago, actually. Yeah. That's, ex- that's yeah. exactly what that was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and I was so grateful for everything that we've discussed here on the program that I did going through the entire boot camp that, uh, you know, I picked up from all of our guests over the years, 1,870 odd episodes worth of information mm-hmm. worked. It actually paid off. Mm-hmm. It helped me get through that in a way that I, I actually was telling somebody I just met recently uh, about what happened and they didn't believe me. <laughs> they literally didn't believe me. Like, no, no, that's not possible to come through that way. <laughs> yeah, it can be. Girl, I proved you wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, my response was more like, well, okay, if you insist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can yeah. only tell you what I knew. That was about it. Yep. It's up to you right. how you decide you're going to interpret it. That's, that's up to totally. you. Totally. It yeah. is all perspective. It Completely. really, really is. You get to choose, and that power of choosing, choose well. Mm-hmm. Choose your viewpoint. Choose your friends. Yeah. <laughs> choose your support. You know, choose your family. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know, I've, really, I've really come to appreciate that this year. Connection, yeah. the, the connection to who are your your closest people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That I mean, made, that, because, that was huge for me. That was right. Huge for me. Just because yeah. you were married, just because Alex is a father, so yeah. you, know, right. you consider. You, I yeah, right. You build your own, you build your family, you build your tribe, mm-hmm. you build the people that are going to support you through hell and back. Mm-hmm. It's especially cool that we've been talking about that on the show for the last few years. And now all of a sudden I had the opportunity to test how well I've been doing. Put it into practice. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it, it was really great actually to know that I, I had done pretty good, that I had some mm-hmm. really support that came through. Um, but it also reinforced for me. I mean, I've, I've had contact with um, oh, listeners to the podcast or other people that I've met outside of these circles um, who don't necessarily have those kinds of social mm-hmm. connections built up. And and now that my, my advice to them is, is constantly the same, just regardless of what's going on right now, work on building your social connections. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter what, if things are going well, going badly, somewhere in between work on building social connections. They pay off so many different ways that you can't predict and understand right now. So but true. when you need them, that's when you realize, wow, I'm really glad I put that time in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it's remarkable as humans, we are able to learn and implement so many fantastic tools to get us uh, into a more, a, a higher level of perception of what's really happening for us. Yes. Um, but an event in life can take us down so quick. Oh yeah. Yet. We forget. <laughs> and the beauty of forgetting, like when you have a community, when you have a tribe to fall back on, is that they will always remind you. 
They will come up to you and say, no, well, you are loved. You are, you're a wonderful person. What mm-hmm. can I do to support you? And that's yeah. how your cork bobs back up so quickly. I mean, mm-hmm. that, that person I spoke to, I'm pretty sure did not have that kind of network. And in mm-hmm. fact, I think this person actually used to have one and lost touch with theirs. And, and so you know, right now the network was kind of small. So I think there was a little defensiveness going on there, but yeah. I mean, when you have that network and you experience any kind of situation that that's challenging, polaric, you know, polarity relates in some ways, um, boy, you come to realize just how valuable it is. Just mm-hmm. how valuable it is. Very much so. Um, I've been going to the same gym since I got back, uh, in October and it's, and it's a great gym. It's a great coach, but I've been like, oh, I need, I need more here. Like, mm-hmm. I, need, I want to step into the community. It's a small gym. It's privately owned. It's not one of these big box gyms, yeah. um, with all kinds of goofy stuff going on. It's very structured. I need structure when it comes to a continual workout and regime for my well being and my sustained longevity. <laughs> You know, I, I'm not a, you know, trying to get into size two bathing suit. I don't care about any of that. I just want to be able to get out of bed in the morning. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Walk downstairs, make coffee, walk my dog. Um, so yesterday, or uh, I think it was Monday, actually, I finally approached one of the women who I noticed we have good rapport working out. And she and I started talking and I'm like, I, you know, I need a walking partner. You want to come walk with me? And she's like, I'm having a hard time getting my steps in. I said, excellent. So we started walking and it's pouring rain here and we're walking, but it's a palpable shift. Mm-hmm. She's going now to introduce me because she's been at this gym for a lot longer than I to mm-hmm. other people. Oh, and they got like a whole little walking, walking group. Yeah. It starts to kind of, um, Snowball, for lack yeah. of a term, where you end up getting included. It's almost like your initiation into mm-hmm. that. And I know a lot of the places that my daughter has chosen to live have been very rural. And the church is where you get community. Mm-hmm. And whether you believe or not believe, and that's what I told her, if you want to know the people in the town, go to the church. Mm-hmm. Go to the service. Go to the potlucks, go to the bake sales, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> to learn how those people are, what they think of, who does what, you know, who you can call on when your car's broken down in the middle of the night, mm-hmm. you know, the local tow truck driver, you know, um, or to get a good, where to get a good cake, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <It's> barbecue, right? <laughs> Important things in life. Mm-hmm. But I think, uh, you know, going back to COVID quarantine, we, our community ties were severed. Some mm-hmm. of us were so lucky to be able to foster more community and to develop community via online presence. Oh, so yeah. Your podcast, um, you know, Debbie G's and her, you right. know, virtually gone wild, all kinds of other groups were popping up. And so I think it's super cool that we're still maintaining some of these really nice communities, but starting to open back up into, Hey, you know, um, I remember during COVID, people would hardly look at you. And if you, mm-hmm. eh, 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 or, or God forbid you sneeze or cough, you know, they were like, oh, you know, I to get away from you as fast as possible. So that finally has dropped that fear that I'm going to sneeze on you and give you COVID. <laughs> people are yeah. now starting to look you in the eye again. Yeah. Yeah. And it, you can smile and they'll yeah. smile back. You know, and, and for a while there, everybody was so freaked out. We were just all like, okay, push your shopping cart through the market, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> get in and out as quick as possible. Don't touch anything. Like you were saying. Don't <laughs> touch <anything. laughs> so I'm really happy that, um, face to face interactions are becoming more easeful. Uh, I think less the control. description. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you, when you I'm talk- a very social person and not having <laughs> somebody to interact with on a regular basis. Oh, I go a bit nuts. <laughs> oh, yeah, I loved it. I was like, please, let's not show up. Let's all do Zoom. Let's all talk on the video chat. I love it. <laughs> let's all just stay home. As an introvert, I thrived. I thrived in the pandemic. <laughs> That's true. It was good for, for int- introverts did very well. Yeah, yeah. we did because we. this is how we love it. Yeah. So make it mandatory. That was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> make it mandatory. 
I like, you're guiding me, telling me I don't have to go anywhere? Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I learned to appreciate it. And I learned to really um, enjoy the fact that our community, like our Thai community was very thriving in uh, mm. 2021. Yeah. And uh, we had tons of students go through the program and a lot of them are international. So it was super cool that I was connecting with people in the UK and Australia mm-hmm. and, you know, China on a regular basis. Yeah. That was super cool. Um, getting to see their perspective, their points of view and building a community where literally if I got on a plane and just flew randomly to certain cities, I'd have a place to stay. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah. Like, Hi, I'm here. Right. <laughs> No, it's true. It's true. And, and it has created a new wing, so to speak, to our social circles. Having yes. that, that virtual connection. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In fact, actually, I was noticing when I went through my craziness the last few, few months, I was noticing most of my social circle was virtual. And yeah. I actually needed to do more to build the local one. Mm-hmm. That, that, mm-hmm. that part was kind of missing. So I've actually been taking steps along that, that line to, to improve that. Mm-hmm. But that virtual connection was, huge for me. And I think anybody who has been experiencing that, that virtual opportunity, particularly since the pandemic started, realizes that they, they may not have actually thought about it consciously, but on, on a cellular level, they, they know, yeah, that, that's big. That's really yeah. big. Yeah. Well, and it's so interesting too, as humans, when we get into a life-changing situation, uh, something that could be perceived as embarrassing or shameful, losing your mm-hmm. job, Sure. Um, struggling with mental health, um, you know, trying to understand that just for yourself, doing it alone is really not serving you. No, it doesn't it's not. serve anybody to isolate. Um, you know, humans can't survive by themselves. Mm-hmm. I, I need, <laughs> I need the guy who's going to drive the truck to get the gas to the gas station so I can drive to the gas station. Right. I need the car mechanic to fix my car. I need the guys that work in the grocery store and the dudes that work in the fields and pick strawberries. Thank you. You know, I need these people. Mm-hmm. I couldn't survive and have the luxury of my phone, the mm-hmm. luxury of this, if there weren't people willing to do that type of job to right. have those kind of ideas. Um, and I used I to say, frequently to the students in Taya, and I'm sure I piss some of them off. <laughs> yeah, that's part of your yeah, job as a coach. I mean, when yeah, you're coaching, exactly. your job is not to be love and light all the time. That's, I mean, that's not what a coach does, right? <laughs> yes. But I would say, you know, you are unique, but your problems aren't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll definitely yeah, piss some people hard. off. Wait a minute. Those yeah. are just, I'm the only one in the world that's got that problem. What are you talking about? <laughs> nope. After seeing, you know, almost 200 people go through the Taya program. No. Yeah, our, our problems are are not. They feel unique to us because we're creating that situation. Mm-hmm. We're we're um, creating that, um, like adding those special spices to the blend, right? Mm-hmm. But the basic problems are really the same across humanity. The Which actually, I mean, right? I, to flip it around, I I have actually found that to be comforting. Really? That, that well, yeah, that it it wasn't just me. Yes. Right. Yeah. That, I do. you know, a, a hundred other people were going through something similar. The, the circumstances may have been different, but the basic thing was the same. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Well, it's not so bad anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, like, goes with that and, and, and also happened to blossom during the pandemic was uh, Facebook groups. People finding oh, yeah. their community with, with whatever issues or things they're having going on. There's other people going through the same thing that you can communicate with. Yeah. And, you know, bounce ideas off of and all types of stuff. I, that that was a great thing that happened. Yeah. Or just sit back and be a voyeur and read all the comments and not. Yeah. Them. Either way. <laughs> you know, it, even just reading what other people are experiencing and realizing, oh, golly, gee, I'm not the only one going through this. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I'm forever grateful for our cool Facebook communities. And I, I still interact in all of them. <laughs> Yeah, lurking, lurking actually became acceptable. That was what was really interesting about that. Yeah. that used to be something that was you, know, you 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 looked down the end of your nose at a lurker, but now it's like, oh, good, you've been lurking. Good, come on in. <laughs> I see you there in the shadows. Don't yeah. Be <laughs> so even that kind of perception has been changing. 
Um, mm-hmm. Mentioned perceptions before, Stacy. That that's been a, a watchword here on this show for like the last year and a half. Because yeah. I, perceptions and perspectives, I I I'm really appreciating, especially in the last ten months or so. I'm really appreciating perspectives because we've been having a lot of guests on. Mm-hmm. And while that has kind of disrupted the old routine of where it was me and a co-host and, and maybe an occasional guest, it's also given me uh, like, you know, what I had before multiplied by a hundred. Mm-hmm. All those different perspectives and some of which I don't even agree with. Some of which, you know, I mean, I, I kind of think, well, you're, you're a little bit crazy there. I'm not going to say it on the program, but you're a little bit crazy, but I learned <laughs> from them. Exactly. Even the ones that I thought were a little bit wacky, you know, by the end of the show, like, oh, okay, there's actually something there I can latch on to. Like, I can mm-hmm. agree with that part. I can, I can feel good about that part. And in so doing, I can also learn to appreciate that perspective that I didn't appreciate at the beginning of the show quite so much. There is a commercial that describes perspective so eloquently, but it's like low key. You don't even know it's happening until I, I just watch it. And I think a vault in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if you've seen the commercial. It's for Chewy. It's a, it's a um, subscription box for dogs. Okay. Yeah. And there's, there's this St. Bernard and he's talking to a littler dog and he's like, Oh, the peanut butter box is here. And he's like, <laughs> It's not the peanut butter box. It's the box our medicine comes in that our mom puts the peanut butter in and that's the medicine box. And he's like, the peanut butter box is here. <laughs> and I'm like, that's perspective. It is. <laughs> I know that commercial too. It's so funny though. I love that. <laughs> oh man. I love the way you, commercial, I think of Walt. <laughs> I, I love the way you sung the commercial. That was great. <laughs> the voice is hilarious. It gets me every time. Oh man! <laughs> Anytime you add voices to animals, it just right. <laughs> I love it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll watch that for hours on Instagram. Saint Bernard with an Australian accent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's good. Personifying our animals. Oh my God. <laughs> it is fun if you try, uh, I try to imagine from time to time, um, you know, different dogs. Like we uh, go to a dog park. So we, we have tried to decide if they were human, what kind of person. What's their personality? <laughs> sure. yeah. All the time. Right. It's so much fun. <laughs> Well, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, writing uh, in the voice of Sherlock Holmes, once observed uh, he was able to solve a case because he realized that owners and dogs look like each other. Yes. Which is scary when you think about it. Well, yeah, that's the same hair color right now. <laughs> but the, as you know, that changes month to month, so that doesn't even matter. <laughs> well, basically, wonder who's influencing who here. Sometimes it's rusty. I'm like, you know, that is a good color blonde on you. I like it. I'm going to do it. You're right. (laughs) It would look good on me. You're absolutely right. (laughs) Well, they're definitely um, a great model to follow. Mm -hmm. They are unconditionally loving unless you do something highly traumatic to them. And even if Mm -hmm. you sometimes mistakenly do something that does cause them some trauma, they'll turn right back around and forget about it. Well, it's it. okay. It's okay. You shot my paw off. It's fine. It's not doing it again, right? Yeah. 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 And um, they're, they, my dog greets everyone. Mm-hmm. He's happy to see everyone. Dog, mm-hmm. cats, uh, you know, humans. He's happy. Mm-hmm. He loves little kids. Mm-hmm. He's very happy. Mm-hmm. He you know, sleeps luxuriously, deeply. Mm-hmm. He wakes up rested. And happy and ready to go. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Hmm. I think there's some fun thing I can learn here. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Right. (laughs) If for the longest time humans have thought that animals were beneath them, I think now they're beginning to realize, uh, well, maybe we need to reevaluate that position. No, it's the other way around. We don't deserve dogs. We don't. (laughs) Uh, It's so funny you should say that. I don't know why. I was scrolling through something on one of the Facebook feeds and there was, you know, some dog owner mm-hmm. had left the dog on this bridge in the middle of nowhere that was freezing cold and icy. Mm. And that's phrase owner. I went, why do we own dogs? Mm-hmm. Oh, own, right. That's a big word. Mm-hmm. It made me stop for a second and think, 
is that actually true? <laughs> so it's funny that we're talking about it now. Because mm-hmm. I just kind of dismissed it as, yeah, you're being a little crazy. Just let it go. <laughs> no, I, I don't think you're being crazy. You're actually tapping in to the, the way human law was created. It, it was created mm-hmm. based on the premise that humans are the highest animal form. Mm-hmm. And that any lesser animal form is property of humans. Mm-hmm. That's where that literally comes from. And nature too is the same thing. Let's, let's, yeah. uh, you know, uh, utilize our resources and that of those of, you know, Mother Earth mm-hmm. to our own advantage and then mm-hmm. not paying attention to what's really occurring. Though I love to watch, you know, Mother Earth will regenerate in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Move out of the way and whoosh, everything grows back. <laughs> <laughs> really cool. But yeah. The concept of ownership really. Hmm. Well, I think that's a concept that in and of itself is going to be shifting. And I think it already is shifting, actually. I think we're in the mm-hmm. midst of a shift. I think it's been going on for about, about as long as the internet has been around, really. So about yeah. 30 years. Mm-hmm. And, and we're going to see a lot more of it over the next 30, 50, 70, 100 years. It's just going to continue and continue until finally it's going to be a completely different, different definition from what it was 30 years ago and okay. quite different from the one we have right now. Mm-hmm. It's already begun because instead of uh, owners and dogs, we're now there's what are they fur babies and puppy parents? Yeah, right. <laughs> yep. Excellent yeah, example. My mom used to call her grand dog. Yep. <laughs> my mom called Rusty her grandpup. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's funny because you know I was out with my husband and largely I wasn't able to be on the trail as much because I have a large dog who was hot. When the mm-hmm. was above 80, he's like, I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'm not putting my pack on and walking in this heat. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm in fur. I totally got it. So I was describing this to a friend of mine who um doesn't own her own dog. She's not really a dog person. And she said to me, well, why don't you just rehome him? Oh, wow. Really good. Wow. And I, again, that's my was initial reaction was, oh, and I thought, okay, let's not bite her head off. That's an interesting perspective. Mm-hmm. I to say to her, who had small children herself, well, you should rehome your top. <laughs> <laughs> well, she, she probably doesn't appreciate that one so much. Yeah. <laughs> and I basically oh, wow. said to her, he's part of our family. Mm-hmm. Let's rehome him. Yeah. He was part of my family. Mm-mm. Even that kind of struck her odd. She was kind of like, uh, okay. <laughs> I had a friend who tried to talk me out of allowing Kenny's cat to move in. She was like, Kenny's my husband. And so she wanted to stay with me while she was on vacation or whatever. And uh, she's allergic to cats. And she goes, well, aren't you allergic to cats? Why can't, why can't he get rid of his cat? And I'm like, for you to stay at my house? How would you feel if you <laughs> met somebody and they said to be with me, you got to get rid of your dog? Or your child, or whatever. I don't really so, like your mom. I would never it. tell someone to get rid of their pet to be with me. So, no. Long story short, that friend didn't stay over. <laughs> She's still friends with you? No. No. <laughs> so, no. Alex no. truly is the queen of personal boundaries. I love yeah. that. I love yeah. that. Yeah. that. <laughs> doesn't take much to get off my list. It doesn't you, take you, much. You cross a boundary with Alex, you do so at your own peril. Mm-hmm. Are oh, you yes. Scorpio? Libra. Oh, that's surprising. I know. Scorpio <laughs> presence, no? I, I mean, I'm close. I'm close. I'm very, I'm, I'm on the 17th, so I'm over there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, very close. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> I'm very for Scorpio. That's how I know. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I, I'll, I'll let him stay. <laughs> He's cute. I'll keep him. <laughs> yeah, I like him. <laughs> well, oh plus, those of us who do have uh, animals in our lives, like um, this guy just climbed into my lap about a half hour ago. And he's been, he, mm-hmm. it, was, and it was totally his idea. It wasn't my idea at all, but you know, he ruled, right. so he was there. Um, he, to the best of my knowledge, has been abandoned at least twice, possibly three times in his life. Aww. So, the idea of a rehome, which is a polite way of saying abandon, yeah. Is not even in the realm of possibility for him. Right. That's just more because, trauma. just because I'm a feeling human, not regardless of the bond that I have with this guy, which I do have. Right. But yeah. I mean, how heartless can you be to just keep, you know, abandoning a being that has been abandoned so many times? 
Mm, exactly. That's the way I look at that. Speaking yeah. of which, I read something really sad. I hate to bring the room down, but <laughs> so I was reading about this vet that was talking about what what uh, puppy parents do when their dogs have to be put down, but they can't emotionally handle being in the room. They say the dogs are like looking for them, like that's the last thing they want to see before they go. So that's yeah. like, so they said you got to tough it out and be there for your animal. Mm. Yeah. I was yeah. like, oh, man, that's so sad to know. I know, it is a tough That's like you can see it in their eyes that they're looking for their puppy parent. I'm not going to say owner. Yeah, yeah. No, we, I, my daughter and I had a very old um, miniature pincher. Mm. And she, she was attending Cal Poly at the time with, uh, with some of her courses in uh, pre-vet work. Mm-hmm. And so we knew he was at the end. We knew he had you know, 17 years old. He was had diabetes. He was starting to lose track of his bowels. And yeah, it was not fun. Yeah. We knew he was at the end. So I sent him with her because I was living in Santa Barbara about two hours away from her school. Mm-hmm. And it was very hard on me. Mm-hmm. And um, she was there and they, they euthanized him in the class so that the students could participate and understand. Um, oh, that's she, nice. Yeah, she said it was really rough. Um, yeah. He, he, you know, she was there, but I remember being really sad that I couldn't be there with him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But her, it, it was, it was her dog. I bought it. Yeah. It was five. So <laughs> it was finally all turned out good, but it's rough. It's rough to say goodbye mm-hmm. to our friends. Yeah. Yeah. Miss him. And since it's interesting, so again, I'm highly perceptive, um, wasn't there when he passed on, I would, feel or see him out of the corner of my eye mm-hmm. in familiar places. You know, you go past where the food dish would be and you'd, I'd see a shadow mm-hmm. or, you know, come home and you'd feel that energy still. Yeah. Even though he wasn't there anymore. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so they're around. Yep. <laughs> in more ways than one. <laughs> and the, the, it's interesting spending six months on the road. I had my dog as my companion. Husband was, I'd see him every four to six days yeah. because he's on the trail. I have a very close bond and I learned, <laughs> I learned how to speak dog, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> At least my dog, he has very strong tells. Mm-hmm. I would ask him a series of very simple questions, you know, very simple structure of a sentence, like you would speak to a three year old and he would, you know, y- yes. And if he was really interested, it would be a really hard, you know, mm-hmm. and it was like, I started to know exactly what he needs. And even mm-hmm. now my husband's all, will you find out what the dog needs? <laughs> <laughs> you need to learn how to do this too. <laughs> you know what you need to get? I've been watching, I follow this dog on TikTok and it's a, it's a poodle, but he can, um, he yeah. has this, yeah, the, the thing with the thing. Oh. Yeah, they can speak. So it's like yeah. a system you set up on your floor and they have different words and then the dog hits the word to tell you what he needs. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I mean, so I think it's really beyond that, but I think it would be very entertaining for sure. Yeah. There's, there's another one on TikTok. I think it's a mini husky. And mm-hmm. their, owners are, their owners are naughty. They put the word oh, no. in there and the dog. Yeah, to yeah. Like, I've seen know. that one. It's so funny. <laughs> Oh my god! No, 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 no. <laughs> I think one time they wanted to go for a walk, but it was raining, and she was like, "It's raining," and he was like, "Bitch!" <laughs> okay. I died so much. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> like I said, I could literally waste hours on Instagram just watching animals. Period. Whether it's a wild animal or. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, don't get me stuck on pigs or otters. I'll be there all day. <laughs> pigs and otters, okay. Pigs and otters. Walt, I want a pig so bad. You don't uh, even understand. I need a pig. Like, I've ingrained it in Kenny's brain. The next pet we get has to be a pig. You, a- you know what happens when you have a pig, right? What? It grows. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, really, really big. Uh-huh, but only to the size of the environment. Those little pot belly ones, can you, are they still kind of the smaller variety? They, they're they smaller, but, like, it depends on how much you feed them and, and oh, their yeah. environment. Like, any pet. Any pet. But <laughs> they're smart. They can be smart as a four-year-old. I want to name mine Piggy Smalls. 
I'm so excited <laughs> for this thing I don't have. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, I got the name picked out. <laughs> I love it. That and my daughter, and like I said, Range Land, Ranch Land, she's out on that. She wants one of those little mini cows. Oh they my god, they're so cute. cute. Oh my god, they're so I'm cute. I'm not doing cow poop, but they are so cute. <laughs> it has many uses. It does, but I'm not smelling it, so no. <laughs> Personally, I'm less fond of horse poop. It's it smells oh I'm just, just, I'm just not a fan of any poop, period. Like, good at all. <laughs> See, this is why I like cats. They just take care of themselves. I don't have to worry about it. You still got a litter box. <laughs> yeah, well, who, who cleans the litter box? Well, Not me. I, I do clean the litter box, but he goes outside so often I don't have to do it very much. That's true. That My outdoor cat I mean, is great with that. Yeah. I mean, maybe like I, once a week. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I love the videos where they've taught the cat how to use the potty. <laughs> We're working on that for the kitten. We're working on that. It's so easy to teach them. It's the flushing that's the problem. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. You know, that would be odd if you got up in the middle of the night and you're like, oh, it's <laughs> sorry. Sure <laughs> enough, <Shut up>, my dad. <laughs> oh, we All right, who left the seat up? Who left the seat up? Who's whispers? <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was just remembering one of the reasons I loved having you on the show last time, Stacey. You have a wonderful laugh. Oh, yeah. Once it gets you going, I mean, this is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> laugh therapy. Well, yeah. Yeah. Sam says, I saw a pig on someone's front lawn a few years ago. They were, they were quite large. Piggy Small is a great name. <laughs> <laughs> right? Thank you, Samuel. Piggy <laughs> Small or Hamlet, one or the other. Hamlet. Oh, I like that too. <laughs> Very clever. <sighs> oh my so, goodness. Funny story about my laugh. Yes, it is unique. Yes, I use it often. Um, <laughs> Very well too. <laughs> so I was in a, God, like a drugstore, CBS or, you know, Rite Aid or something like that shopping, bumped into one friend and I started chatting with her. Of course we got to laughing. Um, and I'm just standing at the end of an aisle and all of a sudden, I like turn to my eye. I see this person like jet into the same lane or same aisle mm-hmm. at the opposite end and look and go, I knew that was you. <laughs> 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 that was another friend. <laughs> it's nice if you laugh. recognize by your laugh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If it's not that, it's anything just... else, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's me sometimes. Oh my God. Don't let it get too serious. I will snort so fast. <laughs> Uh, again, here we keep we keep referring back to the uh, you know Instagram fun, but I guess some yeah. French show. Have mm-hmm. you seen that clip where they had invited all these people with very unique and different laughs on? No. Oh my goodness. <laughs> There's one lady. Oh, out there. God, oh, my God. Oh, my God. They're all doing their different laughs, and I just cry every. If you're having a bad laugh, day, makes the person laugh harder than it. <laughs> So if you're having a bad day, bookmark that. So next time you yeah. pull it up. <laughs> it's an interesting take on laughter yoga because I mean laughter yoga, you just kind of force yourself to get laughing. In this case, you don't have to force yourself. You just watch a bunch of other people laugh, and it makes you yeah. laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was it wasn't there like a Coke or a Pepsi commercial where they had the guy on the subway, and he was just started laughing at whatever was on his phone, and people around I him. Oh so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's contagious. Almost it people just as a yawn. <laughs> it is. Right, right. <laughs> but it, it's it's a better kind of contagion because it, it it's a contagion of joy. Yes, yes, yeah. That's why I've never held back. There was a point in time in my spiritual development where the individuals who I were was who were mentoring me um, approached me and said, "We're concerned that you've laughed so much," <laughs> and I was like. Okay. Wow. Is there something that you're hiding? <laughs> yeah, my good were, to you. Goodbye. Were you? <laughs> nope. Okay. <laughs> well, there is that one. Yeah. Uh, okay. You're trying to find something wrong with me? I, I mm-hmm. got it. That's your job, but I'm, I'm a-okay. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, there, there, there's a there's something about uh, there's a law of attraction side to that. Like, are you sure you want to keep looking for that? Right, right. Like, really? <laughs> like, why are you trying to create a problem where there isn't one? Yeah, uh, yeah. It's uh, one thing to identify something that's actually there, but mm-hmm. why do you need to invent one? Right. I think it goes back to that same thing that we've talked about in Taya as well. You know, you raise your vibration to a certain level. Mm-hmm. That's your default vibration. You're always there, you know, maybe dip down a little up and down just a little bit, right? But at that vibration, you're either repelling or attracting people mm-hmm. based on their vibration. So if my vibration was high at the time and their vibration was just a little bit lower, I could see how my higher vibration, my laughter, mm-hmm. would irritate them. Yes. <laughs> Therefore, they needed to find something wrong with me in order to bring me down. Right. And vibration. And I, it literally lasted for about five minutes. I sat there and thought about it. And I was like, what the fuck? No, there's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I like that response. <laughs> I <Yeah>. like that. <laughs> and, and it isn't so much that we repel them. It's that they refuse to attract. I mean, we live in an attraction-based universe. Yes. So if, if they're not around, it isn't, you, you didn't repel them. They, they refuse to attract what you're putting out. They, they refuse to attract your vibration. They weren't picking up what she was putting down. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. you, you know no. the speed lingo better than I do, but that's the concept. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, uh, like energy attracts like. I'm sure there are scenarios like uh, I remember one Christmas being out with a bunch of girlfriends. We'd had uh, quite a few glasses of wine and we were exchanging elephant gifts, white elephant gifts. Mm -hmm. There was a gentleman who was older with his wife who was so mad at us Hmm. and literally screamed at us in the restaurant because we were having having fun. Mm. Granted, we were a little loud (laughs) because we were drinking but we were having uh, it was hilarious some of the gifts that people were pulling up yeah that really showed you know everybody was like oh and i said no 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 no. that's where his vibration is yeah they can choose to leave we were a much larger group of people i'm sure the restaurant wasn't interested in kicking us out because we Mm -hmm. were you need to order drinks and food you know and he and his wife and i and i actually had compassion and empathy for him and i thought oh that's sad yeah Mm -hmm. Go home. Yeah, the quiet night, stay home. Yeah. But again, you have the power to choose your perception, Mm -hmm. your perspective of where that other person is vibratorily, whether you want to be attracted into it or not. Yeah. It's just like scrolling past something you don't like on the internet. Mm -hmm. Bye. Yep. Keep it moving. I I actually saw. I guess you call it a meme lately. Well, it didn't really have a photo attached to it. So is that really a meme? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, but it was, it was a thing being passed around. And in this thing, it was a note that supposedly was actually written by a neighbor of the person who shared the note. Mm-hmm. And, then, and I don't remember the exact wording, but the gist of it was, please keep your happy child inside the house for less than 15 minutes a day because he's disturbing my dogs. Wow. <laughs> if you don't, I'm going to call the police. That was the last line. Wow. <laughs> I'm to call the police wow. because the child was too happy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Way to kill the joy. No kidding. Harsh my high or what? And for a kid, too? That's terrible. Well, it's also an interesting form of, of attracting stuff. I mean, that mm-hmm. person clearly really had no idea what the law of attraction was. Mm-hmm. But even if they had understood what it was, what were they trying to attract? <laughs> what, what, what was this ideal that they were they were aiming for? Well, the ideal was yeah. one where the only beings who get to enjoy the world are their dogs. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> and their peace of mind. Keep it quiet. But what does that say about their peace of mind? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's um. <laughs> Their peace of mind is completely dependent upon the neighbor's child being indoors mm-hmm. all but 15 minutes out of the day. And 15 minutes was actually probably too much. Mm-hmm. That's really interesting what you just said, though. Yeah. Is your joy dependent on external circumstances? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Oh, we could, be, we could do a whole nother hour on that one alone. Mm-hmm. 
I'm kind of glad we don't have another hour because that'd be fun. <laughs> right, right. But it's true. I mean, if you allow external polarity mm-hmm. that will constantly exist, it's never going to go away as long as you're standing here in this physical body. Dictate your happiness. Ooh, we, you're in for a really rough ride. Yeah, you got some work to do. Mm, that's why you're, I love your boundaries. That's spectacular. <laughs> Thank you. More. It's so <laughs> my, my message for the neighbor is hang on to the guardrail. Bumpy. <laughs> 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 oh, and you got to be careful what you wish for because it's like you could you could be like, oh, well, keep your child inside. It's disturbing my dog. And the next thing you know, your dog died because it was being disturbed. That's what you manifested. Don't do that. Yeah. That's very possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because there's also a challenge there. You have to actually res- accept responsibility for what you're manifesting. That, that's a big thing. That too. That too. That, that's a that's whole. A, that's a hard pill to swallow. So that's, that's the third a whole hour. Hour there yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. We're condensing a three-hour program into one hour. Into a week's worth of episodes. That's what we're doing. There you go. I'll come back later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I was talking about um, Taya and the practice and kind of the basis of it. And that's, that's the foundation of it right there. Yeah, right. You have to, in order to really harness the power that you have to um, allow abundance in your life, to manifest spectacular things, to learn how to deal with polarity, you got to know that it's you. Mm-hmm. you no one else, but you that is creating what's showing up in your life. Now your yeah, vibration yeah. is first and foremost, whatever's showing up, is just a byproduct of where you are vibrationally. Yeah, it kind of it pisses you off when you first realize that because what that really is is owning your own crap to the nth degree. Yeah, you can't like there's no getting away from it anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yep, owning it and loving it and loving it. Yeah, and mm-hmm. loving it, loving it, finding joy in your obstacles that you created because uh-huh. you want to expand more, Walt. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm proving it. <laughs> Yeah, I've been proving it lately. I've been doing massive expansion lately. You know, mm-hmm. like when's the rest you gonna catch up? Come on! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Oh my it. gosh! Well, Alex, is, Alex has actually been you know, five years ahead of me, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's and it's so um, fascinating to me to watch everybody express themselves differently in what they choose to manifest in their lives yeah, right. to expand, yeah. whether it's the loss of a relationship, a loss, you know, uh, some health issue, um, mm-hmm. poverty. Um, you know, I, I was, we were tossing around the idea of, you know, is manifesting really a privilege of people who have more money, who have the basic privileges of being white, of, you know, uh, being of a certain class of income, uh, education. N- no, no, it doesn't. But it's interesting to think that, you know, a lot of, um, Instagram, social, uh, media folks that influencers that post, you know, are showing these grand things. Oh, I got my Mercedes. Well, you already got the $3 million house behind you. How hard <laughs> is it? You know, or <laughs> so it's, it's interesting that. I think that I love your cat shows up beautifully. Sorry. <laughs> in space. <laughs> Cats, Cats in space. In space. <laughs> oh my God. The squirrel. I'm so distracted. <laughs> but that's something to think about too. You know, what is there um, a belief that's not serving you perhaps connected to that privilege idea? Only the privileged have abundance. Only the privileged have manifestation. Yes, I agree that it's super hard to think about managing, um, you know, manifesting and, and abundance when you're struggling for your survival needs. Mm-hmm. The roof over your head for food, for gas in your car. You know, I get that. But it's all about perspective, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, and I've been there. I've done that. And, and just recently, I had to do that with the loss. Of, you mentioned relationship. I lost my relationship, and I had to own up to I attracted it. Yeah, yeah. And and, and it did, actually didn't take me long because I learned all this stuff and so forth. But I I still had to do it. 
And it was, it was one of those feelings of, oh yeah, I guess I did. Cause I, I certainly had no intention of ending the marriage. That was not, that was like the last mm-hmm. thing on my mind, but I thought about other things that I was trying to manifest and I, and many of them were things I didn't know how to make them happen. And mm-hmm. the, the universe figured out, well, the quickest way to do it is to end the marriage. Like, oh, why didn't I think of that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> universe always had your back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting so, too. I mean, in every, um, like sarcastic joke, um, offhanded comment that people make. If they're mm-hmm. a little snide, if they're a little snickery, if they're, you know, there, there is actually a line of truth underneath it. Mm-hmm. So in your example, like what was the line of truth underneath it all for you? There are a few of them actually. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just one. I mean, we, we yeah. like to think it's going to be just one, but I think there are like four. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and there were four that I would have thought were not necessarily connected. Uh, oops. Uh, <laughs> no. Apparently they were more connected than I realized. Well, well, everything's connected. Mm. Yep. But it isn't interesting. Just that little, that little line of discontent in whatever yeah. format that it took in your life was enough to shift your vibration radically to blow up that scenario. Yeah, and I'm, I can also realize that in at least, let's see. At least two of those cases, two of those situations, things I was trying to attract, I think I actually knew on a certain level that the way to end that situation and get where I wanted to get to would be to end the marriage. But what I turned it into my mind was, well, we just need the marriage to evolve into the next thing. (laughs) And and that was really going on in my head. That Because, I I mean, I was committed to the marriage. I was committed to whatever it was going to take to, to, to keep the thing going. Mm-hmm. And the universe said, yeah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, your wife had her own power. She did. Her own power to create whatever she wanted and whether or not she was jiving with your vibe or not. And yeah. she made that clear because she's the one who initiated it. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Super, super interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially so after you've gone through it. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. the best. Hindsight like that. in 2020, what it is. I mean, it, yeah, it, it, it yeah, took me two months no. before I could even talk about it on the podcast. It was just too raw. You know, you, mm-hmm. you, you, when you're going through it, you're going through it. Right. You know, doesn't matter what you're learning from it. You're still going through it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Distance and time, they're a blessing because mm-hmm. they do allow us to have a zoomed out perspective of what happened and to regroup from a, a higher perspective and not be like, oh, I never make any big decisions when I'm down the spiral. That right. Way. That's important. Mm-hmm. I, I actually tried to and, and paid for it. I, um, he won't. I did. <laughs> I did. I, well, no, no, it was okay. It, it was all good because, because it was, it was the right direction, just the wrong timing. Mm-hmm. But I, I was instantly devoted to rebuilding my life. Mm-hmm. One of my first things to do was to get out and start doing something I hadn't been doing in 20 years. And that was to go dancing. Mm-hmm. And I went to a dance and got COVID. Uh, <laughs> now I have gone the entire pandemic. I know I've been exposed to it at other times. Never got it. Mm-hmm. You know, I know that I, I checked with other people who were at that particular dance. As far as I can tell, I'm the only one who actually got sick. Mm-hmm. Everybody else is unmasked. I'm the one who gets sick. Why? Because I'm in a vibrational state due to my wife leaving me, mm-hmm. you know, well, what a shock. <laughs> Who'd have predicted that one? Right? <laughs> yeah. But like you're saying, you know, you weren't at your highest vibratory exactly. level yeah. mm-hmm. down a little where that, where that COVID. I, might, I was might trying to well. fake it till I made it and mm-hmm. right. I, right, I did, right, just right. not the way I had in mind. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. I like that fake it until you make it. Sometimes that works really well. But if you don't clean up the past, if you don't allow it depends on how much residual vibration there is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You just right. it's not really possible to go up yeah. and, and create just, a new default vibration. There, there, was, there was a little bit too much at that point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're super saturated. <laughs> but there was also a positive that came out of it. Yeah. It was really big. It was that the day that I tested positive. My now ex was there because she was packing things up and she volunteered to stay the night to take care of me because I was so sick. Oh, that's sweet. That's nice. I mean, after that kind of a situation to have that result, that's huge. Now I sent her right home because there was no way I wanted her to get sick. Right. Yeah. But nevertheless, that was one heck of a gesture considering all that had been going on just two and a half weeks earlier. 
Mm-hmm. And there, you know, you don't just fall out of love with somebody no. and never love them again or no. don't love them ever again. You just, yeah, it's. No, I, I still care about her just about yeah. as much as I did before. It's just that, like Alex, I've said about you, like, no, you don't get to do that anymore. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Huh? That's yeah. good. Can't That's one good. foot in and one foot out. Can't do yep. it. <laughs> Doesn't work. You can't you can't row a boat that way anyway. No. Not unless you like to go in circles. <laughs> well, if you know how to walk on water, I suppose, but yeah. Well, I've, I've not learned that one yet. Teach no. me. Take, takes a little time, I think. Yeah. Hey Stacy, this has been a fun visit. Thank you so much for Thank you. sitting up for David you. today. I mean, we're looking forward to the next time David will be able to join us, but this has been great. Yes. I'm glad we've been able to catch up with you. Great to catch up with you. Great to meet yeah. you, Alex. Great to meet you too. Yeah. And thank you, live streamers. Thank you, podcast listeners everywhere. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, Woo-hoo. everybody.